Hey guys, Sammy here. How's it going? Today I thought it was time, after four years of suffering, of pain, of salt, it is time that all of us come together to destroy Blizzard once and for all. So this is the Outstone Man. <laughs> of course I'm just kidding. Um, we're not here to destroy Blizzard, we're just here, or I am here, to voice all my criticism. Most of it isn't really new, but I think it's like as a content creator it is important to voice it again and again and again, even if I don't have much of a reach, so basically like 20 people might be watching this, uh, like might be watching this from the start until the end. Let's start with the first point. Uh, which is, I think, kind of obvious. Most of you share it. That's why it's the first point. Bugs and inconsistencies. We know, like, there are inconsistencies in the vocabulary where Blizzard uh, basically printed different texts with similar effects or, like, uh, lots of inconsistencies were actually uh, a result of different texts on the cards, not actually bugs in the functionality. And yeah, Blizzard, like, what the fuck? I'm paying money for this game. Why are there bugs in there? Of course I'm joking. This is actually a fake point. This is actually a point where I rant against the players. Um, as a software developer myself, I'm not like I'm not developing games, so I don't have uh, any expertise in that area. But as a software developer myself, I find it th sickening how all these wannabe programmers from home basically like yeah comment on this whole issue. I don't know spaghetti code. They're assuming like Blizzard is, is coding this game in a shitty way. But, like come on guys, it's Blizzard. Like you with your little JavaScript, JavaScript knowledge or PHP or like go fuck off. And every person that actually works in the field knows how fucking awesome Blizzard is. When it comes to game development experience, Blizzard is is at the top. You could call them backseat coders instead of backseat gamers, backseat coders. These kiddos that just learned a little bit of JavaScript, PHP or Visual Basic, maybe they're able to handle one or two frameworks. Like I, I think it's, it's sickening how they sit there and, and think they can actually judge it. And if you develop a game over years, um, of course there are bugs. It doesn't matter if it's free to play, every single fucking game has bugs. I do agree that Blizzard should be more open about it. For me, it comes down to a social issue, like where they don't communicate these bugs, they don't communicate their opinion on these bugs and inconsistencies. Um, like, guys, it's like it's it's not about it being a shitty software. We don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I'm not sitting here and saying like Hudson is necessarily great develop, but we all know for a fact that Blizzard is at the top of game development. So um, I guess like every 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 internal over there will still kick your ass. My next point is the balancing issues. With every at least second expansion, we face an overpowered deck that dominates the meta. Like of course you could definitely do stuff to prevent this more from happening but overall like i think there isn't a way to completely deny that from happening so we all know what the real solution here is it is just having more updates more content i don't mind facing an overpowered deck on ladder I do mind facing an overpowered deck on ladder for two months, for two or maybe four weeks to play against a super overpowered deck. I don't have a problem with that. You will try different stuff. The, the meta will still shift in that amount of time. But after four weeks, it becomes stale. That's the point where it becomes horrible. The, the solution to that is just more updates. Just releasing changes every four weeks would make it so that we have changes to work with, that we have like new stuff to discover. Even if they introduce like broken synergies with that, it doesn't matter since like after four weeks again, they can change that. The, the real issue here is like playing the same shit for three months. Just Blizzard, give us more changes, give us more content. I think that's the easiest change. I guess that it costs money, but there, like, there's like the next point. My next point actually is 
Hearthstone is a free to play game. I know people will now think um, that I'm like coming out with it's actually pay to win. No, no, Hearthstone isn't pay to win. Hearthstone is extremely grindy. It consumes lots of time if you actually want to have all the cards. Um, but it's not pay to win. My point is more like I sometimes wish Hearthstone wasn't free to play. Because I would be I would be willing to pay on a monthly basis if we get changes every four weeks. So yeah, I'm, I'm willing to pay Blizzard. Please take my money. The next point, the grind. Holy shit. Hearthstone, even though of course it has a um, pro scene, is ca also casual. Like it's on mobile devices. It's, it's overall, uh, you play it alone. It, it's more casual than the other Blizzard games. And uh, if you look at the player distribution over the ranks, you will know that it's way too grindy. Ben himself said that like 80% um, of the players are around rank 20. And we have 25 ranks? That's not how it should be. One thing is the player distribution, which leads into a, a variety of, of like skill between rank 15 and rank 20. Um, but the other thing is also um, how grindy it is to become legend. People always want to accuse all the aggro players. <laughs> but let's be honest, if you want to hit legend every season, you literally can't do it with a control deck. Um, unless you have lots of time. <laughs> uh, the problem here is uh, that you need so fucking many games to get into legend. Um, and with the control deck, the games tend to take uh, like 20 minutes, while with the echo deck, you play a game in like 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, so you're kind of forced actually to use aggro decks. It's not really the player's fault, really. It's Blizzard here at fault. Because the way is way too long to do it with control decks. You can do it, you can do it like for a single season, but you won't do this for a whole year. It, like, it's just too time consuming, it's too exhausting. Um, you're literally burning your players. Let all the players at f rank 5 be legend in my opinion. Like, take take out that huge grind from rank 1 to 5. I know this is a really um, polarized topic and I see reasoning for both. I know, like, you want to feel special if you hit legend and stuff. Um, I think you're already special enough if you make it to rank 5, to be honest. If you just, just look at the fact that 80% of the players are between rank 18 and 20, you are already special enough if you hit that rank 5. Make it so that people can actually consistently make legend with a deck of the choice, with a deck they have fun with. That also leads into another point, the new player experience. New players have, I only, I, I, I honestly believe, new players have only the chicken rank for themselves. Like, I, I'm not sure, like, I, I rarely play at the high ranks. Basically, you start running into um, people with huge collections at rank 22 or stuff. Experience for new players is basically maybe two, two or three even games against other new players. And after that, they're in hell. Their only chance is really like, if they're really ambitious, going into that grind, creating their aggro deck and grinding it out. Yeah. No. <laughs> The standard cycle was introduced to reduce the overall cards you need to compete and I think that was a good change overall. Looking at how it is now, it's it's still really difficult for new players. Like right now when we're like basically close to the end of the cycle, it's fucking difficult for new players to get into it. A new player, if he does all the hidden quests and shit, um, I think he will get gold for like 20 packs or shit. Like just give them 50 packs or something. Like give them like a real starter collection. Because right now I feel um, it's so divided between a new player and the, the, the default player that sits at rank 20. It's literally impossible for a new player with a small collection to have fun for a long time. Of course, I don't know. <laughs> like maybe there are players like I'm, I'm pretty ambitious, right? Maybe there are players that start the game, sit at rank 20 and are fine with like 
never leaving that rank um, and just playing their own deck. Um, I can only compare to myself before I became ambitious in Hearthstone, um, but I still always made progress. Like I played my own like mage control secret shit. Basically back then you could compete with a new player's collection and some creativity and some skill. You could compete to a certain degree. And last but not least, let me introduce the Hall of Shame to you. It's a Hall of Shame for Blizzard. Blizzard. Greetings, traveler. I yep. will hunt you down. Hunt you no. down. Yep. Let the Great hunt Lucas. begin. Yep. Do me trade. No. Nope. Me go face. Yep. Me retard. No. Nope. Me am smart. Yep. Me summon the ock. No. Nope. Summon huffer. Yep. Summon Misha. No. Nope. Another huffer. I yep. hunt Clear the board. No. Nope. SMR. Yep. Be nice to people. No. Nope. Turn seven lethal. Yep. Play with mech. No. Nope. Top deck. Yep. Well played. No. Nope. Well faced. Yep. Me choose to go face. We don't need to trade. Everybody knows that a face is the play. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, no problem. Hit the thumbs down button. Um, but I would really appreciate it if you leave some feedback so I know what I can do better next time. Um, of course, you can also contact me here on YouTube, on Twitter or Twitch, maybe tune into the next stream. As I always, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.